Paleoanthropologists often use the term anatomically modern humans to refer to members of our own species, who lived during prehistoric times. But who were these first modern humans, what did they look like and what were their customs? The human remains discovered at the Ethiopian site of Herto shed light on the pattern of late Pleistocene evolution, addressing the question of how recent human populations evolved. With only minor distortion, this 160,000-year-old adult cranium, with a capacity of 1,450 cubic centimeters, is nearly complete. The morphology is described as being intermediate between earlier archaic African forms, such as Bodo and later anatomically modern humans. The Bodo cranium, is a 600,000-year-old skull also from Ethiopia, while investigators regard Herto as a possible immediate ancestor of modern humans and have designated it as a subspecies. Indeed, Bodo and Herto are important fossils for understanding the origins of our species, Homo sapiens. However, anatomical modernity has proven difficult to define and describe, and it was not defined or described in the definition of the Herto man fossils of the Ethiopian desert. In the Star Wars trilogy, the Jedi discovered evidence in the oral traditions of the Sand People, that say the human species may have originated as slaves taken from their planet. Like anatomically modern humans, the Sand People were a genetically distinct species, that evolved from earlier forms. Star Trek Fleet Command, a game that transports you to the fabled Star Trek universe, is sponsoring this video. Imagine plotting your course through space, assembling an unstoppable fleet, and taking part in intense combat, protect your starbase and increase your power throughout the galaxy. The open world of the game allows you to freely explore a vast and diverse space landscape. My personal favorite feature, the game's breathtaking graphics bring the virtual world to life with extraordinary details and breathtaking visuals, making for an incredibly immersive visual experience, iconic Star Trek figures. Like Captain Kirk and Spock, as well as well-known vessels like the USS Enterprise give the game a nostalgic feel. The immersive new Star Trek provides you with an entirely novel narrative experience that explores alternative dimensions and storylines. This infuses new life to the Star Trek universe, presenting a captivating, one-of-a-kind storyline to interact with. Epic battles with players from all over the world add a dynamic and competitive edge to the game, making for an exhilarating experience. New updates include new TNG officers including Riker, a highly skilled and experienced Starfleet officer, known for his strategic thinking and strong sense of duty, Wave Defense introduces a new way to interact, based on Wave Defense teams that transcend alliances, new missions include 5 Wave Defense missions, 2 Prime Nodes, 6 Avatars, 4 Frames and 2 Hailing Frequencies. Download Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in my description, then go to the official website StarTrekFleetCommand.com and click the store icon, open the promo codes page, and enter the code warp speed to redeem your rewards, install the game now and start your journey in the Star Trek universe and become the leader of a mighty new alliance. Back on planet Earth, the state of Afar is located in northeastern Ethiopia and covers 27,820 square miles. However, Paleontologists have long been interested in the Afar Triangle, also known as the Afar Depression, a geological depression formed at the junction of three diverging tectonic plates, the Nubian, Somalian, and Arabian. It is one of Africa's lowest points and is frequently referred to as the hottest place on the planet. It also has the world's largest lava lake, which was formed by the world's most active volcano. The Afar people live in the region and are known as the toughest people in the world, because of the extreme climate. When torrential rains fell across much of eastern Africa during the winter of 1996-1997, many semi-nomadic Afar people, including those from the Herto village, fled the depression for higher ground as a result of the deluge. The rains washed a lot of soil into the Awash River, exposing a lot of fossils. Because people and herds moved to higher ground, these newly discovered bones were not trampled and remained undamaged until they were discovered. After the floodwaters receded and the skies cleared, a team of paleontologists discovered three human skulls and numerous other human bone fragments. When the scientists began looking around, it only took them a few minutes to discover the skulls of two adults, most likely males. Six days later, they discovered a third, a six- or seven-year-old child's skull shattered into about 200 pieces. After years of meticulous cleaning, reassembly, and research, 
the team was confident enough to announce to the world that it had discovered the earliest true Homo sapiens, older by at least 1,000 generations than anything previously discovered. Nonetheless, the skulls resemble modern humans in almost every way. The face is flat, with prominent cheekbones but no large protruding brow ridge seen in pre-human ancestors. The brain case is also rounded, rather than the football shape of earlier human ancestors. Interestingly, the Bono specimen has partially hollow brow ridges, a feature only seen in a few skulls, including Carbwe from southern Africa, Petrolona from Greece and Sacapastor from Italy. Importantly, the morphological continuity demonstrated by Bodo and Herto specimens as we move through time is remarkable. The transition into a lighter supraorbeal torus, but still a double arch, for example, and the prominent zygomatics appearing more modern. Many researchers believe Herto belongs to our own taxon, Homo sapiens sapiens. For many researchers, this discovery lends strong support to the theory that modern humans emerged in Africa, and gradually replaced other populations, including Neanderthals, with little interbreeding. Herto was discovered with both Aculian, and Middle Stone Age tools. The Herto remains were dated to around 160,000 years after of reconstruction and analysis. The so-called Herto skulls were thus tens of thousands of years older than their closest competitors. Some experts believe they should be classified as a separate species, Homo sapiens idaltu. The Herto hominins were classified as a new subspecies of Homo sapiens, with descriptions ranging from on the verge of anatomical modernity, but not yet fully modern to anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Ancient populations of Bodo hominins were most likely distant relatives of Herto modern human populations, in the same regions Ethiopia. This is one of the first archaic specimens that can be considered closer to Homo sapiens, and it is most likely an ancestor of modern human populations that first appeared in East Africa 250,000 years ago. The Herto remains consist of three specimens, the best preserved of which is an adult male skull with a very large endocranial volume of 1450 cc, within the larger end of living humans. Its general morphology is similar to that of Homo sapiens, though it retains some archaic features. This cranium, along with the other two discovered, another adult, and a six-year-old child, show evidence of post-mortem defleshing, which is consistent with deliberate mortuary practice rather than cannibalism. Although the child's skull appeared to be nearly identical to modern human children's skulls, the adult's skulls showed significant differences. Each of the adult skulls was remarkably large when compared to the skulls of 6,000 modern humans, but none were as large and robust as the Herto male. In other words, these were huge, strong people. According to researchers, the similarities in features finally put to rest the long-running debate over the origins of modern humans. While it is known that early human species left Africa and settled in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia, it has been unclear for decades how these pre-human species all evolved into the same Homo sapiens species. As the well-studied case of the Neanderthals shows, the second wave of African humanoids interbred and or overtook the pre-human species. What this discovery in Ethiopia demonstrates is that the shared features of modern humans, our high-rounded brain case, small brow ridges, originated in Africa. They are the clearest fossil evidence for an African origin of modern humans to date, and that they are yet another blow to the idea that modern humans had a multi-regional origin both within and outside the African continent. According to the Out of Africa theorists, this is yet another nail in the coffin of multi-regionalism. Proponents of the multi-regional theory disputed that conclusion, claiming that the paper ignores fossils found in Europe, China, and Indonesia that are roughly the same age as nearly modern humans. While significant, the skulls shed little light on the origins of modern humans. It tells us something about dates and features, but it doesn't answer the question of where modern humans came from. According to the researchers, differences in brain shape between fossil and modern humans are more likely due to facial evolution than brain evolution. Although the brain sizes of Homo sapiens from 160,000 years ago in Herto are similar to those of modern humans, the shape of the brain cavity differs, implying further brain evolution or shape change related to face evolution. 
The authors compared endocranial shapes in immature and adult specimens because brain growth stops with the eruption of the first permanent molars but facial structure continues to grow until adulthood. Endocranial shapes were similar between fossil and modern children throughout brain development, and differences in endocranial shape developed with continued growth of facial structure. According to the researchers, the differences in endocranial shapes between fossil and modern humans are likely due to dietary, a lifestyle differences that influenced facial bone structure rather than brain evolution. The treatment of the skulls immediately after their owner's deaths 160,000 years ago, was perhaps more interesting to the casual reader of paleo discoveries. Each of the three intact skulls, as well as the ten skull fragments discovered at the Herto site, bore signs of deliberate post-mortem tampering. No, not in a cannibalistic sense. The Herto fossils, on the other hand, show the earliest known evidence of mortuary practices. The cut marks on the skulls indicate that the skin, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels were removed, most likely with an obsidian flake. Then, using a stone tool, a faint cluster of parallel lines was created. The child's skull has been significantly altered. The lower jaw was separated, and soft tissues at the base of the skull were removed, leaving fine, deep cut marks. Portions of the skull were polished and smoothed. The cut marks aren't typical of cannibalism. If you wanted to eat the brain, you would simply smash open the skull. Instead, the scratches could be used as decoration. Researchers believe they weren't caused by the environment, because the polished areas go across the breaks between the recovered pieces. In fact, the child's skull appears to have been fondled repeatedly. This is the first evidence of hominids handling skulls after the individual died. The child's skull has been significantly altered. The lower jaw was separated, and soft tissues at the base of the skull were removed, leaving fine, deep cut marks. Parts of the skull were polished and smoothed. Investigators believe the polished areas were not caused by the environment because the marks cross the gaps between the recovered pieces. The child's skull appears to have been handled repeatedly. Despite these signs of ritualistic behavior, Homo sapiens had a long way to go. Being physically similar to us was clearly insufficient to trigger the cultural complexity, innovation, creativity, symbolism, and possibly spoken language that distinguishes us from all other animals. The human remains discovered at Herto provides important new information about the pattern of late Pleistocene evolution, which addresses the question of how recent human populations evolved. The Herto remains were classified as on the verge of anatomical modernity but not yet fully modern or anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Anatomical modernity has proven difficult to define and describe, and it was not defined or described in this study. So, what caused those changes? Theories include the last ice age's hardships or random genetic mutations, but no one knows for sure. That is why archaeologists are returning to the ancient soil of eastern Africa in search of new clues. Don't forget to use my Star Trek Fleet Command link in the description or scan my QR to become a commander in the Star Trek universe.